Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. So today I am going to do a color palette inspired by an artist that many of you know. Now she is one of the OGs of acrylic pouring. Um, and if you've been pouring for a few years, you will recognize the name Anne Marie Ritterhoff. She taught plenty of people how to acrylic pour over the years. And one thing that I always recognized in her videos is she loved to use a palette like this. You know, your turquoises, your burnt siennas, your yellows or golds, golden yellows, things like that. And she did so many. And I just had the urge. I was playing around the other night and made a little TikTok video. Uh, if you didn't see it, the link to get to TikTok is in the description. It, the color palette was beautiful. So I wanted to do a bigger piece. So here are my colors that I'm using. All right. First, this uh, teal is actually made by Jacquard, and you can get this at Blick, this brand. It's actually a turquoise, not a teal. It's a light body, opaque acrylic paint. This yellow here is by Golden. This color here is a color by uh, Color Art, a primary element called Aquarius with a few drops of this here, which is also sold at Blick. It's Lumiere paint, but it's made by Jacquard. They're the same people that make the alcohol inks. This here is Burnt Sienna. You can see how thick my paints are. They're really thick. Speaking of thickness, uh, some people watched that TikTok video and said, boy, your paints look a lot thinner and you're doing the bloom. It's not that they were thinner, it's that the video was on time lapse, so things move quicker. So it gives the illusion that they're thinner, but they are not. There's the burnt sienna that I used. This color here is a custom blend of uh, primary elements. So I took the peacock feather and I added like four drops only just to deepen it. Just of the carbon black, just to deepen it up a little bit. This here is Autumn Leaf, primary elements. And this color here is Bright Iridescent Gold, also by Golden. And then the last color I have is my Blue Black Indigo, made by Atelier. The white you're going to see me put down is made by Amsterdam Paint. I'm not using a house paint. All of my paints are mixed with, this time I am using Vivid Enamel, Tintable Paint Base, sold by Color Art, and Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish. My measurements are 75% of the Vivid Enamel to 25% of this. So, to make it a little bit easier for you, if you have a cup, a little cup, and you want to just make one color. I would take my Vivid Enamel, or if you're using something like Sherwin-Williams uh, Bare Untinted Deep Base, I would take my, my untinted base, whichever brand you're using, I would fill it up to about here, okay? And then however much this amount is, I would use approximately 25% of that. So I would fill it up to here with the pouring, the base, and then I would add this much varnish. That's to make it simple. Let's say you want to make a large batch of it to have on hand so you don't have to mix it up every time. You want to make your pouring medium ahead of time so that all you could do is pour some into some cups and add the color. I would take whatever base, untinted, untinted base I was using, I would fill it up to here, all right? And then 
up to the top with, well, almost to the top because you don't want it to overflow with the varnish, mix it all together and you're good to go. Put a lid on it and you're good to go. That's the easiest way I can explain this to you because the, the ratios change all the time depending on the kind of paint you're using, depending on the brands you're using. You know, a medium bodied paint from one brand can have a totally different consistency than from another brand. So you got to kind of just experiment and you're, you're wanting when you're doing something like I'm going to do today, you want a really nice thick consistency. Now, not many techniques would have a consistency this thick. All right. A lot of them would be a little bit thinner than that. And a few of them would be much thinner. Those few being the Dutch pour and the pearl cell uh, technique there. But for something like what I'm doing today, which is a bloom, you want it to have a nice consist. You want it to leave a mound and slowly disappear. Okay. So I'm working on a 16 by 20 paint pouring canvas. Now they sell these at Michael's and they also sell them at Hobby Lobby now. And what's good about them is they have a piece of cardboard I will show you. So there's the back. It's got a piece of like, not a cardboard, chipboard underneath. So these are really good if you want to do anything that has a lot of weight to it, like the bloom technique so it doesn't sag in the center. Uh, they're really good for resin work, uh, any kind of mixed media work that you may be doing on them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the only other thing that you need to know is I'm going to be using a black cell activator. I've made that with a carbon black heavy body paint sold by Golden. That's this one right here. Carbon black. And Australian Floetrol. Those are the only two things. Which, by the way, Pixel Paint Designs has gotten more Floetrol in. And they're getting more uh, Australian flow trial in in a couple more days. So if you missed out on it last time, it is there. And there is still a discount going on 15% off and it's shipping from the United States. So I'm just going to add my base paint here quickly. And we are going to get started. I'm just going to make four puddles. I'm going to add the cell activator on top of those puddles. I'm going to blow them out. And then I am going to work with the painting a little bit with my palette knives and all that.
Okay, so here it is before I work on it any further. I just wanted you to see the pretty colors. Oh, they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is now tilt, stretch, maybe add a little more cell activator in some spots. Very pretty though. Love that, that deepness. To the whole thing. So you're going to sit there and say, what in the world is she doing? Why is she pouring this paint over those beautiful centers? Well, let me just say my life is chaotic and it seems there's always something popping up. So in the middle of recording this video, my daughter called me to inform me that my grandson had a half a day at school and she wasn't going to be able to get him off the bus. So I had to stop what I was doing, run to get him. And by the time I got home, my paints were thick. I, I, I just couldn't work with it. So I literally had to pour on top of them and try my hardest to work some magic here. So in the end, I, I ended up loving the painting. I'm not totally in love with the composition but I've decided to let it dry and I'm going to then do a second layer of work on this piece. If you've been a longtime viewer of mine you have seen where I take some pieces and I'll alter them either by doing a layer of resin art on top or embellishing them. So that's what's going to end up happening to this piece because You'll see when we get to the end, I just love the colors. I love the patterns that I got. So just stick with me here till the end and I'll be back. So I'm getting ready to give you a close-up. Uh, the the close-up is just so much better looking than what you see when I'm making this painting. I mean, look at these colors and the patterns. It's like snakeskin and, I don't know, chameleon-ish almost. And once the flash comes on, they are really beautiful. So as I said, not what I was aiming for originally, but I'll take it. Uh, this area here, I absolutely love it. First, I wasn't a fan of that yellow, but now I most definitely am. And it's something different. I've never used a palette like this before. Uh, so I really love it and uh, hope you do too. If you did, please click like. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I will list below a link that shows you exactly how to mix all of these paints to do this type of technique and many others if you want. 
Um, all the social media links are down there. Also, please follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, uh, Facebook. And come check out our Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. We're almost at 18,000 members. So come on over and share your, your work with us. We'd love to see you and have you there. I really enjoy the time I get to spend teaching and interacting with all of you. So please leave your comments below. And as always, I love you all and happy pouring.